welcome back to the channel. Quick couple of hours to kill, so I'm going to go for a, a bit of a tramp around the back fields here, see what we can come up with. So, you can come too, see you on the first. So, first hole reading a nice 42, foot bars to the right. And a coin immediately. First hole and a coin. A little bit of an imprint. But what have we? It's a little hip now. Hey. Little George V. Let's see if we can get a wee date for him. I uh, don't think we're going to get a date. I think it has a you know, reasonable amount of detail. Nice wee bit of patina. Starting to, starting to deteriorate. Saved just in time. Edward the Seventh. Edward the Seventh. The grace of God. King of Britain, defender of the faith, India, blah 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 blah, etc. I'll take that. So a solid 44 was actually blasting the ears off me. Uh, I had to look twice there. I thought it was an old pipe actually, but uh, you're not the only one, Ollie. Uh, it's like the spout of a kettle or a teapot. <laughs> now, let's see if we can find the rest of the teapot. I don't say it's quite heavy, but it's full of mud. <laughs> Social history. So, pretty nice tone to this one. Looks like it's in the wall. Let's see if I can nudge a wee bit of that out. Should have brought the trail with me. Just bear with me one second. Trying to keep us in frame for all the excitement that's about to unfold. Hold, hold on, all I'm doing is wasting memory card. Get back to it in a second. So, have it narrowed down. I can just pluck it out. It was round, and in the ground, as Ollie would say, it's a coin. I can't really see with the glare of the sun. Let's see that it calms down a bit. I'll give it a little, a little rub on Craig's magic trousers. I'm not really wearing Craig's trousers, to be fair. It's a Three decimal in St Elizabeth, and it's ships hip day. <laughs> I absolutely adore these little coins. 1959, Elizabeth II. Not that long on the throne. Oh, what a little beauty! I think of all the the old coins. These are my favourite. I love to get a really good condition to one. Absolutely beautiful. 
course it's, it has been a theme of the ship going right way back to the Vikings on coinage. Uh, but take a Viking one, alright. <laughs> Perfect. So this was reading a 33. No indication. No indication of furrow or non-furrow. Has the depth of a uh, the dreaded, you know what? Oh, we're on the silver rise. Who have we got? Hold on, I can't see through that. There we have a George the Sixth. Where's the sixth shilling? Nineteen. Can't really make that out. Nineteen forty. Start of the Second World War. So I'm not sure how much. I forget what the cutoff date was for silver content. It's probably about fifty percent silver, maybe. I think nineteen forty was. I think they needed their silver for the war effort and all this sort of thing. Could be wrong. I'm sure some of you more learned folk would know. Doesn't have the same sort of clunk as a maybe a Victorian silver shilling. But yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Not bad, Nick, actually. To join my collection of other shillings and sixpences. I'll take it. Nice. On to the next. So this one is a thirty-nine forty. I've dug half the and wall out. Let's see. Right. Back to it in one second and don't just be wall out. I'm wasting. I've only brought the one battery with me. So a bit of scratching and scraping with the pointer. You can see it just here. Little tobacco lid handle. I think these are absolutely amazing little pieces. Tell me, have any of you ever found these attached to either the tin or the jar that they were from? Be interesting to see. Great little thing. When I found one of these the very first time, I thought it was some sort of a a medieval or no ornate little brooch thing. But yeah. Nice social history. All day, every day, twice on a Sunday. <laughs> so this is giving me forty four full bars to the right. Oh. Great big buckle. Bit of horse tack. The straps and a horse go through there in various ways. <laughs> Never get tired of digging these up. Give you an idea of the industry that's going on. I mean, this could be an agricultural plow, horse and plow setup, or it could have been a soldier on horseback. Just don't know, but I would say most likely just a bit of 
horse tech from maybe late 1800s, early 1900s, thereabouts. Don't see any designs or markings on it, just your bog standard buckle. But I love finding these. I have some collection now, I'll tell you. <laughs> Sweet. So a nice 32. So we're in the in the sword. Oh, oh, do you see what I see? Silver. Are you ba So, 39 on the legend. A few bars to the right, slightly clipped. Shite ball. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, dear, 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 dear. Yeah. It's got up because I have wasted some memory and some battery. <laughs> On the next. This was a 37. And no indication. Get rid of some of this crap. Better that out. Whatever it is, oh, it's a bit of crap, is it? Another coin. So, what have I got? Let's give it a wee rub. Probably pretty much toasted. No, I can make out. Hold on one second. Bear with me. I can't often, it's a Hibernian. I can see the harp. Let me get it into the light. See the crown just there and a wee harp. So the wee Georgie, somebody or other. Give it a date. Not actually get a date off this one. If you bear with me when we second though. Well, this will bring it any Another wee rub required. So it's either I doubt if it's George the First. It's most in this condition most likely George Georgie the Second. But I can just nail a date. We could pinpoint the Geordie. <laughs> pinpoint the Geordie. 
I'm not seeing anything. It has the potential to be cleaned. Ah, hold on. Yeah. I say it's probably clean up all right. I'm going for George the second. Not that I'm an expert, it's just a guess. <laughs> Good, on to the next one. So, a bit of a jumpy wee signal. So that 37 to 40. I'm trying to see this through the viewfinder. Oh, can you see it? I think. It's round. Is it a little bit on? I think it's a little coin. A little rub. I'll have a look at it. It looks like a little half penny of some sort. But it is knackered. Nice shiny side there. Where is it a button? Actually, it's been downgraded to a button. I'm not so sure. Seems to be a little bit of writing. That top edge. It? And if that there's a shank, it's slightly off centre. I think that's just a bit across. So, yeah, we toasty coin. On to the next. Actually, just looking at it again when the sun came out, I can make out a young Vicky, young Victoria. Looks like a bon head. Looks like a Victoria. Definitely, I would say a female. So we can just make that out. I don't know what this viewfinder is showing because the sun is just blanking it out on me. But it couldn't possibly be on. I'd say it's a young Vicky Bunhead early hypnie. So nothing on that side. It might clean up. I clean up, but yeah, nice we find. This signal was jumping all over the place. Signals everywhere. Which tells me it'll be nails and crap. I can't even see the sun. <laughs> yes, one of my favourite finds, the old musket ball. For heft in that all right. You certainly would not want to be hit in the back of the back of the ear with that thing. Loads of these, I've nearly got a jam jar full. Uh, this all oh, mostly this size, but a few of the smaller pistol y shot ones. Yeah. Oh, Another wee signal. A bit of cack. What have we? It's a wee bit of... Do I see a little design on that? Hold on one second. Give that a little... Oh, set me musket ball down. Try not to lose it. <laughs> Metal detector loses fines. Can you, can you see a design on that anywhere? Or am I imagining things? It's something, but I have no idea what. Is it like a little. 
I don't know, scoop thing. You know, something for for grooving out leather. But why the design? Let's see if it even is a design. I'm not so sure. Ah. Anybody seen that or am I imagining things? Interesting. I'll have a look at that when I get home. So that two-hour hunt turned into a four-hour hunt. <laughs> I'm absolutely famished. I'm going to call it quits now. Uh, not least because I have a nice cold case of beer sitting for me waiting in the fridge. And uh, absolutely famished. So, just on a completely different tangent, if any of you are interested to know what it's like being electrocuted in the nuts, drop me a line. It's quite an unusual experience. I don't know. <laughs> it can only happen to me. That's me sterilised now for the rest of my life. So, there you go. Safe as houses. <laughs> anyway, enough ranting and stupidity. Happy hunting. Look after yourself. Take it easy. See you on the next. Bye bye. <laughs> Hello. Welcome back to the channel. A couple of hours to kill, so I'm going to head up to the back fields here and uh, see what we can come up with. It's actually, I was going to go out earlier on, but it was just too flipping warm. Although, <laughs> having said that, it's still pretty warm now, so uh, ground's a wee bit on the hard side, but not impenetrable. Impenetrable. Not very. Not. Uh, well, for fuck's sake. when life breaks down, when there is systemic contradiction. My name symbolized all that was corrupt to society. His name symbolized all that was pure. And I was being held in the embrace of a man who was pure. And these inviolable sanctities were preserved in those ten words. And it is the desacralization of all of these that has put us in the mess that we find ourselves. Isn't it true? Alas, it is much worse. A person may end up believing in anything. Of a man who was pure.